today I ordered the Department of Defense to deploy additional active duty forces to the region. Over the next 24 to 72 hours, more than 7,000 additional troops from the 82nd Airborne, from the 1st Cavalry, the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force, and the 2nd Marine Expeditionary Force will arrive in the affected areas. We woke up Saturday morning and I, I went out, you know. He's at his house. Yeah. And he went for a run. And I'm at my house, 18 miles away, and I went for a run. I mean, that's what paratroopers do in the morning. And it's funny, we both got back from the run, and he was watching TV, and I guess I was cooling off doing something else. And uh, President Bush came on TV and said, I am sending uh, American forces into New Orleans. And about that time, we all jumped up, and he got a phone call. and. And I knew a phone call was going to come, and, and uh, was that a call? He actually said, "That's right." I'm sending the 82nd. I'm sending the 82nd Airborne I'm Division. I'm sending the 82nd That's Airborne right. Division. That's right. And I, I've been back for about 30 minutes from my run. I'm sitting there with my wife, and of course, we're all watching the news because we kept just anticipating something must happen. And they said they had this, some special announcement, and the President came on and said, "I'm sending the 82nd Airborne Division." And I sat there, my wife looked at me, she goes. Maybe they forgot to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. I remember Stephanie just looking at me going, maybe they forgot to tell you. What General Honoré helped was uh, he, he knew what needed to be done, and he didn't care what anybody else thought he was going to get it done. Uh, there are very few things you so vividly remember in your life, but I remember Russ Honoré just sitting there going, I just, I just want you to fix that. And you know what I mean? Because I remember asking him, so, so sir, what's the orders for the 82nd Airborne Division? And he said, if I have to tell you what to do, I don't need you here. He says, your job is to fix that. And, you know, that's all we needed. And we kept him informed. He'd give us little tweaks here and there. We'd tell him the things that we thought needed to be done. There, were, there, were, there was never a question that Russ Arnery was going to do whatever it took to get that situation fixed. Um, and so people had enormous uh, faith and trust and confidence in him. You know, there's those who like to portray him as being a little flamboyant and everything else. Un underneath any exterior you may have seen was an incredibly brilliant, smart uh, person. The best use of the helicopters in the opening days was search and rescue, and that was the priority number one given to me by the governor, was do uh, compliment, search, keep people alive, search and rescue, uh, work on the evacuation of the city and ask me to lead that, and then to provide food, water, and medicine for people. Here's the incredible thing from all the news reports we went in expecting the worst. Sure did. I mean, we thought we would be shot at, there'd be unruly mobs, there would be anarchy in the streets, uh, you know, where there was unruly mobs and there was anarchy <laughs> in the street. <laughs> but the sheer presence of a lot of uh, American uh, service members, in this case paratroopers, all wearing their berets, all with the weapons slung over their backs, walking up to groups of people who were unruly and needed help, there was an immediate almost calm that took yeah, place. You wouldn't believe the difference in two days, just two days. When we hear of looting taking place at one of these locations, we had immediately dispatched two or three squads, about 24 paratroopers there. And as soon as the Humvees pulled in, and the American paratroopers just got off very quietly and started walking to the, the building, all the uh, looters would scatter and run. There was no more, con there, was no, there was never a confrontation uh, or a problem with anyone. There's a presence when you put a couple thousand troops walking the streets. And in this case, uh, they, as you know, we went in with, uh, with the beret zone and we call those presence patrols. I was looking for the word we use. Presence patrols. Because one of the other side mark we had was to do everything possible to protect the cultural sites in uh, New Orleans, like the cathedral and the French Quarter, because if the quarter caught fire, you know, it would be impossible because we had no running pumps. We could only put fire out with uh, buckets underneath the helicopters. And also, uh, to my uh, uh, knowledge, I didn't know that the property on St. Charles is some of the most expensive property in America. So, uh, but we concentrated the 82nd Airborne in the French Quarter around the cathedral, and we put the 1st uh, Cavalry on the West Bank. You know, you're taught to be a selfless servant in the military. Every 
person who puts on a uniform is you're there to serve. And, and in this situation, when we could do it for other Americans, it was probably perhaps one of the most gratifying experiences you can ever go through.